All right, how you doing? So this is the final word. I've not done this for a while because I've been kind of busy in the last couple of weeks and months. If you guys know my personal stuff, then you know what the reason why. Um, so yeah, Millwall v Burnley. And I kind of feel like this was needed to do because right now we're reaching a kind of a, a weird part of the season. We are now currently um, 12 games into the campaign. Burnley are fourth in the table, which by all means, if you said back in July that we would be fourth in the championship by um, early November, then you would say, okay, we're doing pretty good. Um, and there's this weird kind of just cloud over the club right now, which feels like no one really knows the clear direction that we're going towards, and there's a lot of question marks. And I still believe that there is time for these question marks to be answered with due time. And by all means, there was performances in our last championship campaign under Vincent Company that was very much questionable, and we also had concerns back then too. So for that reason, I don't believe that there is this kind of need to seriously stop questioning Scott Parker, and that's been that that's been what's happening. And I get it because the game against Millwall was poor, very poor, and the games against the likes of Plymouth at home was poor and many games really has been very poor in terms of just a clear performance in terms of a kind of general control of threat in a game not control of a game control of just a clear attacking threat we haven't really done that and there's been times this year that we've won games and you kind of feel like I mean, I just kind of feel like we didn't deserve that, really. And there was also this weird question for me, which I always question in midfield, that I don't really fully know what the the link between the midfield and the attack really is. And that main issue is we just don't really have a clear goal-scoring threat. If it was uh, Nathan Teller back in the previous campaign, or, of course, in all the other campaigns prior, if it's Vox, or Ingsy, or whoever else, but we don't seem to have a clear, obvious attacking threat, which is fine. You don't need a, you, you don't need someone who's like a 20-goal a season forward, right? You don't. It can be spaced out across the entire squad. However... Let's look at our attacking options. We've got Jaden Anthony and Cole Yoshio and Sarmiento. And these aren't exactly players that you'd expect to get um, 10 goals in a season. They are kind of, you know, they get five assists and a couple of assists. But they will be more of just like they'll chip in with goals throughout the campaign, you know, sporadically. And in terms of number nine, again, we didn't have like a real clinical number nine back in the company year. We had, of course, uh, Mashi Barnes for most of the campaign. Lyle Foster came in a few times. I think he only scored one goal that season against Wigan. And then Barnsley wasn't really a clinical number nine. He just dropped deep and linked up play and became a nuisance and helped the team out in that way. Skills, you know, and J-Rod as well, also chipped in as well, especially in that earlier part of the campaign. So you don't disastrously, like, desperately need, like, a guy that can score 15, 20 goals. But right now, goals is the main issue. In terms of the stats, I saw a stat on Twitter. It was freedom, actually. Along the lines of, in terms of XG, you may not care about XG, but it is valid in terms of just a general threat you have towards the opponent's goal in a game. We are bottom in terms of XG in the last five games in the entirety of the championship. In terms of actual chances created, we are also like near the bottom as well for the entirety of the championship for the last five games. And defensively, we are also pretty good. You can never de deny that defensively. We seem to be pretty solid. But it's just we don't really seem to have a real clear threat. We're playing Kolyosho on the right, which realistically is a left winger. So I feel like he's limited out there. And Hutonji, of course, dotted the game. I didn't really feel like he was absolutely like awful. I'd, I don't think he's a, like a bad player by any means. Um, but he's not someone that you should really rely upon to score you a ton of goals for a campaign. He's more of a backup option, which to be fair, he probably is. And... In terms of key players, you're looking at the likes of a Josh Brownhill, who I think um, has been pretty good this season. And his job is the same kind of job that he did back in that company campaign. Be in the right place at the right time, be smart with the ball, and to keep it ticking. And that's what he does quite well. And I feel like Hannibal tries to do something similar, but just I kind of expect like, a little bit more in terms of a bit of a creative, risky like spark from him, I feel like. I want to see a little bit more, I think, in terms of him in the final third, taking, taking on a man taking a risk I want to see that 
And the games right now just have not been fun to watch. Like, they just haven't been. And as a football fan, you want to be entertained. And look, like, boring or, like, um, efficient football has to get you wins. Like, it has to. That's, that's why Sean Dyche worked for so long. That even though the football, by all means, wasn't great, it worked. And so you kind of just feel like, okay, well, it gets you results. It's fine. And I always, throughout all those years under Sean Dyche, I never had a feeling of... I just don't want to watch the game. Never have. In all those years, I never had a single doubt in my mind saying, I want to make sure I'm at, how, I am, I'm at the game, or if I'm not able to go to the game and I move to Poland, I'm able to be at the house to go watch the game for kickoff. Never had a doubt that I was not going to be there. And it, it, right now, I, I kind of feel a bit different. Like, right now, I have this feeling, maybe because now I have kids now, so I've got bigger priorities than that. You know, than just Burnley, I've got, I got much bigger priorities than Burnley right now because of that, because i got children. Maybe that's the issue. Uh, not the issue, but maybe that's the reason that I would rather spend time with my kids and just go out with them and then go and do that than rather watch the footy. And... I don't know if I would still feel that way if we were playing a bit more of a better style of play. You know, like it, things felt like it was a bit more entertaining. And yeah, I've just not got this real like urge to go and watch the game at the weekend. And I still watched it partially, but like, you know, it, that's just kind of how I feel and how many people also seem to feel as well. But under um, Sean Dyche, even though despite the worst of how it got, I never really saw, I never felt like that. So that's kind of where, where I'm at in terms of, Burnley and watching the football right now and with Scott Parker I don't think that he'd be being sacked anytime soon he won't be I think with under Scott Parker my always um, my feeling was that he was going to be getting us over the line as campaign he may not be too pretty but you know, I think he'll get it done because we've got a pretty good team now my main issue is is that if this is what it's all about, what's going to happen next year? I have no hope that next next season we're going to be doing really well in the Premier League. So, like, if we go up, which if, it is an if, then, like, I, I think we're going to get absolutely spanked in the Premier League right now. So I'm not really even looking forward to next season. I don't think Parker can, can really improve the players to a level or adapt tactically to be ready for that level. So it's kind of like, he has some time. He has time, of course. He's got, he's, he's, you know, like we're still fourth, right? We're still not, we're not like 15th. But we want to see a little bit more of an improvement in terms of some improvement from these players. We know Collier is better than this. We know Cullen is better than this. We knew that, well, when Foster was playing, we knew that Foster was better than this. We knew that many of these players are better than what we're seeing right now. And defensively, again, it's still fine. I still think I want to be a bit more urgent with the passing up top because I feel like they, they're still a bit slow at times. So it means that the opponent team can set up better, much more faster. So it's harder to break them down. So I want to see a bit more pace in terms of moving the ball off the pitch because I feel like we're just a bit too comfortable and just keeping the ball like we can have all the possession in the world but realistically if they are set up then it's so much more harder and I feel like we pass the ball to like Sovereign Anthony or to a Kaliosh or way too late so it's like yeah we sold, all the, we sold a lot of players in the summer right that's going to be a big question. And there's still some players that are injured and that could come back and can make a big difference. Of course, Mike Trezor is a massive name that we can look forward to maybe seeing. Aaron Ramsey as well. Nathan Redmond as well. There's still names that can still come back. And you can say can definitely make an impact, especially in the, in the attacking third. Um, sadly, like especially Trezor. So really want to see how he does. But... I do feel for Parker a bit because, of course, like a lot happened in the summer. A lot of players left. A lot of good quality players left as well. But I still feel like we have so much of a like bigger advantage in terms of our quality compared to the rest of the league that I don't know if that excuse can last too much. It gives some leeway. But I still think we can be doing better in terms of not just the results but performances. Because we can still get results, like that Plymouth game, for example. We still won the game, but it was not great by any means. So, I want to see a bit more. And is he under pressure? I feel like, by some fans, they may be a little bit miffed with what's happening right now. But you've got to give him a bit more time. Just to kind of see what else can he figure out in terms of pass passages and styles of play. And um, maybe a better cohesion, give him some more time. 
But my main thing is, let's see if we do make it click. I still don't have much hope for next season if we do go up. So, yeah, it, it's just... We'll see how we do. But that's the kind of final word for, for Millwall. It wasn't a great game with really at all. Probably the worst performance of the season, let's be honest here. But... It's now a big one now. We've got West Brom away. A big game. And we do... Our best games this year has been against the, the bigger sides away from home. You know, our best performances this year, really the only two, I would say, is Leeds and Luton, both away from home. So, I feel like the way that we play to be a bit more counter-attacking may suit us more in a game like that. And we may actually have a pretty good performance against West Brom. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not, like, nervous that much West Brom. Because I feel like the way that we play is more suited for when we actually want to attack more, like on the break and on the counter and have that pace up top. I think that West Brom, hopefully, can be a really good performance. And I'll, I'll be honest, we, we need it right now. So, yeah, that's the final word. West Brom up next. Comment down below your thoughts. And up the Clarets. See ya.